I'm at Digital Film Technology with Simon. Now, a big part of going digital is the fact that we still have a lot of film that's, you know, that people have archived over the years and it still has a lot of value. And we must not forget that and we must bring it forward with our transition to digital. Now, Simon here from Digital Film Laboratories has a, a very evolved and quality based solution for that. And so I just wanted to, to bring this to the attention of my viewers and the, the community in general, because I want to remind them about this and also bring them up to date with the fact that we can really bring this, these old films forward at a quality which is greater than you could possibly imagine. And, and, and this, this wet, gate, wet, wet gate scanner is a, a, a big solution to that. And I wanted to let Simon sort of explain to us how it achieves the magic, nearly magical effects on the older or scratch films. Can you, can you go into uh, that part of how the projector, the scanner uh, does its magic, please? Sure. I think, so the important thing about uh, this scanning technology is really about the ability to capture film and convert it into data for future generations. That's right. You know, typically, scanner technology has evolved from telecines, which were regarded as the panacea for linear translation for commercials and for feature film, and it would be a process of putting the film on, color grading, and delivering a video format. In the generation that we're dealing with now, obviously film is largely obsolete, and what we're having to uh, effectively manage now is a, is a legacy. So we've got over 100 years worth of content, dotted around various archives all over the world and in, in various states of repair and condition. And what you need to do is have a technology that allows you to digitally clone that material and in a way maintain the integrity right. of it. That's right. Um, so you have choices at the scanner stage to decide whether you just want to capture the film warts and all, so with all the dust and scratch and issues attached to it and then fix those problems downstream or make key decisions on the scanner technology itself before you start the delivery process. And the advantages of having the ability to fix these issues at the scanner stage is obviously a time and cost relationship. So if you can fix dust and scratches through infrared scanning or through wet gating technology such as has been demonstrated on the machine here, then if you can do it out the scan, you get a better quality result and also you're not having to think about those issues downstream and the cost implications. So that's not to say that the scanner can't offer those alternatives because we both do infrared scanning at the initial stage and you have choices at the scanning stage as to whether or not you process that infrared scanning mat, which is captured at the same time as the RGB scan either internally or whether you pass it downstream and then process it using third-party software. Clearly the easiest way to achieve a good result is to try and find the right solution at the scanning stage and then your deliverable is much faster as a consequence. That's right, so what I, I hear from you here is that if the data is there and you can retrieve it, it's worth spending the extra effort in doing so because also that keeps true to the actual intent of the, you know, you're not sort of, I know you use special technologies to fill in the data that, that gets scratched or is missing, but it's really the best way actually is to pick up that data if you can. Yeah, I mean, I think the fundamentals of what you're dealing with is, is an analog medium in, in, intrinsically in its yeah. own right. And if you can apply technologies at the scanning phase, which is, a true representation of that material, then you get a better chance of having a higher quality result that doesn't have any artifacts in it. And, and the key element in this is when you're cloning material for the purposes of archival, you need to maintain the integrity of the original material as much as possible. You know, we've got lots of digital processing that we can apply, you know, spatial and recursive algorithms that we can use to fix various elements for dust and scratch processing. Right. And we can do that all in real time within the scanner as well. So, you know, you've got choices, but it, at the end it depends on ultimately the level of quality that you're trying to get to. Now, digital film technology is very proud of the fact that we produce the best scanner on the market for cloning and providing that material in the best possible condition for future generations. The problems come when you start to interfere with the scan itself and you start to apply a range of different uh, processes because each one of those can potentially impact the final quality of the material. 
not necessarily that obvious, but when you start to look at it in detail later on, you might find that you've added some form of artifacts which you don't necessarily want. And that's particularly important for long-term historical archiving. So having the ability, as we have with the uh, Scanner T HDR, to do an analog organic wetted transfer allows the process of just filling in the, the gaps, the scratches within the surface imperfections of the film during the scanning phase. And because the fluid that's used is effectively the same refractive index of the film itself, you end up with an almost perfect translation of the material, but it's done in an organic way rather than in a digital way. Yes. So once it's literally the liquid's gone into the scratches, it's scanned, and what you're seeing is a clean finished image, and at that point it's then digitally converted into either a DPX or a TIFF file. Or if you want to, as part of the process, we can do a parallel delivery at the same time. So you could have a proxy H.264 and a 2K or 4K DPX. So th this is all in real time. Yeah. Okay. And so, but I must say, people watching this, uh, you, you should go to the the website and have a look at some of the example scans. It is literally like a looking at magic at the something that is not viewable passing through the wet gate and looks like it's it's you know an answer print. Sort of, sort of Great, solution. in fact we've got a, a demonstration on the monitor next to us, uh, which perhaps you could cut to later, yep. which um, shows you a clip translation between wet and dry, side by side, so you can effectively see immediately the organic process of that correction. Rather than doing it digitally, you have the ability to do it in a way that's both real time and more natural to the material itself. Mm. That's not to say that you can't use uh, an infrared strategy for certain types of materials. It just depends on the level of the damage itself. Now typically if the material is quite lightly scratched you might want to think about an infrared pass and do either processing internally or externally but if it's quite a heavy damage there's a lot of work that might be needed downstream to do that digitally so better to bring it upstream and do it in a natural organic way at the scanning stage and it's all in real time, so that's the key advantage. And so, just on this point, like, this is really much a tool, f the right tool for the right job. Correct. You can basically, depending if the, the film is very old, to the whole plethora of the film out there, you've got the best solution to approach to that, that situation and problem. That's what I'm hearing from you, and that's what Yeah, and I think the, the, the main issue that you have with uh, digital processing is to do with the types of films that you that's might right. use, and the sorts of damage that might be on them. So, for example, um, black and white materials might well be very badly scratched, but you cannot use an infrared pass on them because they've got quite a lot of silver content in them, so that you don't get the proper matte in that scanning process. So, consequently, you can't use an infrared scan to fix digitally downstream for black and white materials. So, having a wet gate solution doesn't care whether it's black and white or colour, it will fill the gaps in regardless yeah. and you get a fix for it. That's the right tool for the right job. Now, exactly. just before we finish up, just tell us, who who is this product you know, for? Is it for, who, who buys this type of product? Well, predominantly digital film technology sells this product into large government archives around yeah. the world. That's, yeah. that's, yeah, of that's course. effectively yeah. who we are. Yeah. So, uh, you know, an example might be the Library and Archives of Canada, it might be the Slovak Film Institute, it might be the BFI, you know, there's a whole range of different uh, large government or uh, funded organizations that have a, a, a mountain of archive uh, film which they recognize needs to be converted into a digital domain or digital format. And I think that uh, the ability of Scanity, which is very nice, is it has uh, uniquely the capability of delivering high-speed, real-time 2K and 4K scans into a server directly that you can then decide what you want to do with later. So you're effectively taking your history from damaged and old and decaying films and you're converting it into a digital format for future generations. Yeah, bring it into the future because film projectors are becoming sparser and sparser as time goes on and the ability to watch that content will become harder and harder so we really do need, it is an, you know, it, it is a uh, extremely important effort that we bring some of the history, I know that Australian Film and Sound Archive I think has one of these. Yeah they do indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Australia is very proud of our history although it's not very long the film that we do have of it 
uh, the government's really keen to bring it forward so we have it there to uh, look at in the, in the future and, and know who, where we came from as, an, as a nation. And that's where I think a lot of this is driven. Yeah, that's correct. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, film doesn't last forever. It has a yeah. very good shelf life. It, you know, typically, you know, film started its life in the late 1800s, so, you know, 1890, around that kind of period, and has evolved over the last 120 years or so. And, but unfortunately, it's in various stages of decay. And some of it's okay, if, as long as it's stored correctly yeah. and it's got the right atmosphere and you know it's the right humidity. humidity yep. All of those conditions help to maintain the longevity of the material. But fundamentally, it, it's not an indefinite issue. So at some point, all of this material has to be looked at and ingested and managed for future generations. And really, that's what Scanity is about. Anyway, thank you very much. Simon from Digital Film Technology. Uh, this is James Gardner at NAB 2015. Bye for now.